my world, I'm of course Brett Kasdan. As you know, seven nights a week I stream live over on Twitch playing a variety of video games. The link to my Twitch channel can be found in the description below. Now, uh, this week we uh, got new contact with Star Trek Online and Stowe is featured every Thursday night. Uh, to always keep up to date on new content and whenever we get new content we'll be able to talk about it on the Friday commentaries. So this week we had the Shattered uh, Shattered Houses event, which continues the Klingon uh, Civil War story arc, raising even more questions on the future of the Klingon Empire and what the hell the developers are going to do. I have a couple of ideas based on what happened within the context of the mission. And we got a real shitty task force operation that is just, that is incredibly tedious and basically encourages players to just freaking buy out the event so you can get the uh, get, get the gear. So let's talk about the good stuff first. Well, let's talk about the mission. Uh, again, it continues the events that happened in Kittermer Discord. You are a fugitive of the Klingon Empire. You end up going to Nimbus 3 to find uh, a specialist that can uh, help hack into the Klingon database to get evidence to clear your name as well as to clear the name of Jaula, revealing that Jim Pak is the one who launched the mycelial weapon at Kittimer way back in the previous mission. Uh, as a starting point, going back to Nimbus 3, and particularly the bar that was controlled by the Orion Syndicate, was a real highlight because A, you get to interact and chat with people within the bar and so forth. Uh, I'm surprised there wasn't any references to the last time the player actually goes to this bar. So, so basically revealing to me that the bouncer who was originally there, is is we basically kill him. So, since there's no direct callbacks uh, uh, to what happened uh, during the Nimbus story arc, if you actually go to that particular location. Uh, you get to have another big shootout in, in said bar, which is quite awesome. And you go back into the arena, which got a complete rework as you're dealing with Madrin, who actually makes a great reference that the player is the Odo to Madrin's Quark, which, considering the numerous times you run into Madrin uh, throughout the course of Star Trek Online, kind of makes a little bit of sense, considering that he, you run into him on New Romulus, and he is working with the Orion Syndicate and stealing stuff from the Romulan Republic. So, it, it, it definitely... It's a reference that definitely works, in my opinion. So what, and in that battle where you're dealing in that bar shootout, you actually end up fighting a Tyrannosaurus, set, Tyrannosaurus Rex that Madrin beams in. That's right, you, the Ferengi beams in the Tyrannosaurus Rex for you to deal with. Which is, I can safely say, only in Star Trek Online can something like that happen. Uh, from there, you end up going to what was originally the House of Torg. Uh, the, uh, forget the name of the mission that this location in, was originally. It got completely reworked and bringing it up to date. Into what, uh, again, it's part of the year of the Klingon event. And you're, and it's a series of, it's essentially a escort mission. Uh, and thankfully, the person that you're escorting is the again the person you went to recruit on Nimbus Three is not the, the there's no chance for them to die they take a they take a bunch of damage and i'm assuming there's going to be an accolade or something associated with it where you where if the the hacker does not take any damage there, there has to be some sort of accolade associated with that um but essentially escort missions and it actually leads to a full-on boss battle against a giant target and a bunch of klingons that are loyal to jim Pak and and the uh the the uh the guy that Robert O'Reilly is uh playing the guy who used to play uh Galron uh so uh, getting to fight a giant targ is, is also quite cool in and of itself so you've seen some of the details as it pertains to what was the house of Torg. It, it definitely looks great with its uh with its uh, rework and I'm hoping that uh, next time if I, um, next time I focus on something on the Klingon Empire and or the start of the character early enough or replay that m mission, if that mission is still there, that we get to see this uh, from the House of Torque perspective. 
before it gets uh, taken over by Klingon intelligence, which is an oxymoron in its own right. Uh, the, the new mission actually ends on a climax in an epic space battle. Uh, where between you got the uh, Jim Pot forces and the uh, House Molokai forces that you're teaming up with, and then you get the the Gorn and the Orions joining you, and then the big revelation and the truth get coming out about what Jim Pot's actions, and then you get like a division being uh, split within the Klingon Empire where the houses are like the great houses are like you know what neither are fit to leave we're just gonna get out of here sit back and and move on they're washing their hands of the situation. And this what leads to a big, uh, a big question. Jim Pak says that a high council isn't needed, and that a, and that what is needed is an emperor. And so that raises a serious question: on what the hell are they going to be doing with the Klingon Empire when this civil war ends? Uh, is the empire going to be split? Much like how the Romulans are, where the player faction is the Romulan Republic, but you got the more villainous uh, Romulan Star Empire. Is there going to be? Is the Klingon Empire going to be split along the same way, where you have a more villainous Klingon Empire running around, and then you have uh, what's essentially the uh, the Klingon Empire that you have initially? Uh, we have, we're evolving to the Klingon Republic, uh, the Klingon Federation, or whatever the hell it is you want to call it, the Klingon Union, or, 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 or something or other. I mean, at, at this point, it's, it's getting, it's becoming increasingly problematic in wanting, in seeing how the character of Jim Pak, who has been the Chancellor and been your principal point of contact, uh, as relates to the Klingon Empire since the beginning, and particularly if you start a Klingon-related character, uh, or a, a character that's associated with the Klingon Defense Force, is like, how exactly is that going to play out? Is Jim Pak going to be killed off, and who's going to take over? It's already been said that many of the, the great houses are not going to follow Ja'ula. They don't feel that she is fit, uh, fit to lead. Much like the, because it's you know going trading one extreme for another. Uh, there is the mission does toss a teaser in there regarding Galron, who says like maybe he'll take the job. And where's the great line is like, uh, well you can think of worse fates, but Galron replies, do the job for a day and you'll see otherwise. So it, it they're definitely raising a lot of questions in the and and not to mention when there will be another mission and my guess another mission is and I'm, and the big conclusion of this is not going to happen until at till probably January or February with the uh, next anniversary event. If they work, if we get another mission. Uh, before the end of the year, I I am actually going to be really surprised because it's been, uh, it's been a it's been a few months since uh, Kidmer Discord came out. So we have questions, we got a cliffhanger, we got doubt, we got intrigue as it relates to everything that's going on in the Klingon Empire and the future of it. So definitely looking forward to that now. Let's talk about the big negative of the Shattered Houses update, and that is the Synthwave uh, Task Force operation. It's essentially you get to take part in a holographic simulation of of the big synth invasion of Mars that is depicted in Star Trek Picard, and it is fucking tedious. I mean, it is it is a boring mission. Uh, the synth ships are not really much of a f uh, of a threat at all. Uh, you could, they are basically glorified shuttles at best. Because try to think, they're basically you're being attacked by a bunch of runabouts, for lack of a better term. They say they're they're frigates, but they are much smaller and they're real fragile and easy just to pick off. Um, so it's just boring, and it, and it, and the enemies are just basically a nuisance. And your goal is to get to 
as many points to beam uh, people off of the stable ships, get them to transport ships so they can evacuate the area. So you're basically, you know, it's a straight up defensive, uh, it's, a, it's a rescue mission, but it's just really badly done. And I understand why it's like this, because what are they, if you're basing something off of an event from Picard, which wasn't really action focused, and it's, it's pretty much the one big major battle that most people actually enjoyed from that series, from what I understand. It, you're, there's only going to be so much you're going to be able to get out of it. That's going to be kind of interesting. And, and that's, and unfortunately, from my perspective, it wasn't really interesting. It, it, it was tedious and, and also buggy. As a matter of fact, one transport towards the end of it would not move and would basically had to wait for it to be destroyed so the mission could basically wrap up. Um, so it was what it was there. And also, one other thing, and this happened, I'm not sure how often this happens with people, but uh, I was going to do some more Task Force Operations last night on my main tune. The game crashes, and then when you log back in, and you get a lever penalty. Which is really freaking weird, considering that uh, you get a notification that pops up when the game crashes, saying, "Okay, this has been reported. There was a game crash, blah blah blah," and you still get the thirty-minute lever penalty for no something that's no fault of your own. Which it, which is just a bow set when you really, when you really think about it. Uh, so yeah. Anyway. That's going to do it for this week's commentary. Um, and I, as usual, I don't have a clue what the hell I'm going to be talking about next week. I don't make up my mind on that until, until the, basically the day of when I just decide to sit down to record these things. But coming up over on my Twitch channel, uh, Friday night, tonight, uh, which is October 9th, we're going to be playing, messing around with Nickelodeon Kart Racers. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, we're doing Twitch Sync, Sunday night Overwatch. Monday night, night and Tuesday night, we're going to be doing... Kingdom Hearts, potentially we could finish that. Wednesday, we're continuing Stranger Things 3, the game. I think we're about the midway point from that, because uh, that, that game is turns out to be much longer than I actually thought it was, based on what notes and footage I was able to find online to actually get an idea of how to play it. And of course, Thursdays are dedicated to Star Trek Online, so be sure to come over to my Twitch channel to hang out and 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 keep up with all my shenanigans and offense until next time my friends tighten your, tighten your friendship bracelets stay safe stay healthy and we'll talk to you next time bye